In this video, we're going to explore why they call it a negative binomial distribution. First, let's illustrate what a negative binomial distribution represents or is. And it's if we were to repeat an experiment until R successes and let X represent the number of trials beyond R until R successes reached or reached, that is a negative binomial. And here we're going to let P be the probability of success and 1 minus P be the probability of failure then the negative binomial dis distribution can be written like this. We're not going to explore that much more. I'm kind of assuming that you've seen that and understand it. I have a nice video on finding the mean and the variance of a negative binomial if you're interested. So, but before we get into why it's a negative binomial, I want to briefly talk about this binomial series. And then we'll jump right back into why it's a negative binomial. So, a Taylor series about zero, meaning a Maclaurin series, for f of x is equal to 1 plus x, where alpha is any you know a real number. So to, to create this Taylor series, we find the first derivative, the second derivative, the nth derivative. Now this notation here, it's called what's a falling factorial. So this is you know, a falling factorial of one, because there's only one term. This is a falling factorial of two terms, and you just go down each time. And so this, you know, it's alpha times alpha minus one times alpha minus two, etc. So until there's n terms. And then when we create the Taylor series, you know, f of x, you know, about zero, it's this. And you plug in zero to each of those. And now we plug in, so when we evaluate this at zero, we get one. When we evaluate this at zero, we get alpha x. When we evaluate this at zero, we get this, and so on. Well, this can generically be written as a sum from, from k equals zero to infinity where this is the falling factorial of alpha k, so there's k terms here, divided by k factorial times x t raised to the k. So now there's also one more bit of notation. When alpha is a real number, then this, this little coefficient in front of the x can be written this, and it's called a generalized binomial coefficient. And that's if that's a real number. Okay, so now enough of that. So one note is we're going to look at this combinatorics here, combinations here. That's this. And then by definition, it's this formula, you know, this formula. Then if we were to write this term out until we get to r minus 1 factorial, we would we would get to this part. So here it's you know it's times r minus one factorial, but we're dividing by r minus one factorial, so those go away. Now, in this top term, if we factor out a minus one, factor out a minus one, and then we keep doing that for all of them, factor out a minus one. Since there's x terms, we get minus one raised to the x. Now the x factorial it just is down, but each of these terms, and I'm going to reverse the order, so this is minus r, then the term in front of it, r, you know, r plus 1, is now minus r minus 1, and we keep doing that for each term until we get to here. So it's minus r minus x plus 1. So we haven't changed this formula. But this top part is a falling factorial. You know, we, have, we start with minus r, then we take it times minus r minus 1, times minus r minus 2, and we keep doing that for x terms. So this can be written in falling factorial form. And then again, this piece is like here. It can be written in a generalized binomial coefficient. Now, Let's look at the density. 
of the, or the mass, probably mass function for a negative binomial. We said was this, and then based upon uh, note one, this combinatorics can be written like this. So when we plug in this to the formula, then this looks like a binomial, but it has a you know a negative piece here and the negative R there. And that's why they call it a negative binomial. And that's it. <laughs> but based upon what I've just showed you, I want to um, show you a quick proof that the negative binomial sums to one. Now in my video, mean and variance of a negative binomial, I use a more traditional way to show that it is a probably a mass function. But here we're going to make use of that binomial series that we just looked at. So here p to the minus r can be written like this. So it's 1 plus p minus 1, you know, where the 1's cancel and we're left with p. But this looks like that binomial series. And we just showed that it can be written like this where this kind of represents the x, so we take it over here. Now, um, this part here, the falling factorial over x, uh, you know, factorial, can be written like this, you know, where uh, r is a, um, you know, it's, where it's raised to the minus r. So this we just showed. But we also showed that this is that combinatorics. Now we have p to the minus r is equal to this. So if we divide both sides by p raised to the minus r and then of course take it to the numerator, then we get 1 over here and we get this piece. Well this is what we wanted to show. If we can sum over this probably mass function over all possible values, and it equals 1, then it's a probability mass function, and that's what I wanted to show. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.